get ready to enter the vortex. Starring Vandita. Hi, come on in. Today we're going to talk about folding the fitted sheet. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about folding, and in particular we're going to talk about folding fitted sheets, which is a fine art form, but not one that you can't achieve. Um, to start with, I'm going to talk about folding some other items that are part of your sheet set. I just got this sheet set on sale, and of course it has to be processed. So, regular pillowcase, like so. We check the inside here for any labels. If there's a paper label, you just rip it out. It's a bad thing to keep in there. We all know how to wash sheets. Okay, so I pre-checked these for labels. Um, didn't want to show you guys how I remove labels. That will be covered later. But fold it into thirds, like so, and then fold it in half. And we did the same with the other sheet, um, sorry, the other pillowcase. Okay, then to fold the, the flat sheet, we want to take it out, and that's why I put it on the bed so it's easier to pretty much get a handle on it. If you don't need somebody on the other side, you can fold all your sheets by yourself without assistance from anybody. So, what you want to do is, again, fold it in half on this side, sort of walk it on down so that you have the other side folded as well. Okay. And then we fold it again. Again, requiring no assistance because I don't know about you guys, but I find it hard to find somebody to fold with. The cats are not helpful in this area. Okay, and then we just kind of do a little tuck, tuck here. Again, we want to keep the corners straight. And if you don't remember how to fold something, what you'll do is you'll have at least one good example in your closet. And you can always bring one out to kind of see how you did it the last time. So you can standardize your fold. <clears throat> the biggest part is being consistent. And again, you just walk the fold all the way through. And like so, just keeping it nice, tidy, and you can fold it. Now you probably think, well, I got it brand new. It's probably all set to go. That is not true. Each vendor manufacturer has a different way to fold their stuff before they put it in the shrink wrap. And so what you really need to do is just check it and refresh it. And so twice, and then one more time, like so. And then when you put it in your closet, you want to put them all face forward like so. So that all your flat sheets are in one area, all your pillowcases are in another. We're just going to stack these for now until we go to the linen closet. And I have three fitted sheets to be folded. And since I haven't done this um, in a couple of weeks, I brought along a previously folded one that I have just to take a look. Now, um, I don't know if you can see, but I have a queen size bed, so pretty much all my sheets are queen size. Then I have some twin size ones as well. So, again, you want to standardize per sheet size. Okay, so it looks like what we did here 
was fold this way along the length and then half it. So we'll do that again here. And always as you're going along, do a check underneath and uh, take out these little pesky washing instructions. It's usually not a good idea to cut this because if you do, it sort of takes the whole thread out and so uh, sort of unravels the, uh, the stitching. I learned that one the hard way. Okay, so we want to sort of flush out the pockets here. And again, following the example that, um, that I had done before, we're going to take these sides, the um, sides that aren't the fitted sides, fold it in half, <coughs> like so. And then what we're going to do here with the pocket is sort of tuck it underneath. And then follow that along. And what you want to try to do is match up the seams, because that's how you're going to know you have the same amount of fabric on each side of the fold. Okay. So again, we're doing that on this side. And it's okay if you need to redo a fold, if you kind of forget how to do it. I didn't practice this before the show, so I want to make sure that, you know, I'm just doing this on the fly here. And uh, if I make a mistake, we'll just get right back to it. In fact, I'm realizing already that uh, this particular manufacturer has stitched this side there by fooling me as to the length of the sheet. But let's finish it and see what happens and see if we can't rescue it and make it into a decent fold. Yeah, I'm noticing it already, but I think, I think we'll be okay. So, again, what you need to do is just sort of take it, shake it out, make sure you don't have any pieces of fabric that get folded into a wrinkle. And you're just going to straighten out the corners here. And again, remember, you don't need to have somebody hold the other side for you. If you're doing that, you're wasting your time and somebody else's. And the whole point of being anal retentive is, let's do it ourselves. So, again, we're, we're taking it out like this. And I've checked the interior. This matches up. Perfectly. Very good. And we got these little stringy things. Um, not much choice we have in those. Again, like I said, not a good idea to cut those off. And you want to shake it out periodically to just kind of make sure that you didn't mess anything up. And now, if we follow the example that I already have here, you're going to notice that I folded it this way, and then I moved it this way. What you're trying to do basically is even it up so that you can have a consistent fold and the same size and width stacks in your linen closet. For me, that's particularly important. My linen closet is very, very small, and so I had to think about it and sort of move things around for a little bit before I finally figured out the way to fold it and the way to stick it in there. You may have to adjust some of what I tell you as, uh, as you move on in your uh, organization there. Okay, so we're going to orient this sheet in the same way as the sheet I've taken out as an example. And let's see, like I said, the, the folks here who did this sheet, obviously a different manufacturer, so that's why I've got the flat side here on the top and then here on the side. But we can work around that. Not a big deal. And you'll also find once you do this, even if you have a manufacturer that gives you like the little scrunchies all the way around, you'll still know which way to orient the sheet when you're putting it back on the bed the next time around. And that will save you so much time in the future. It's unbelievable. 
So, now we want to try to make it as even as we can with this one so that we get the same size. Again, we're aiming for consistency. And you can be a little creative if you'd like. So, you know, this one, I'm just going to do a little tuck this way. And you're going for like a square effect up here. So it's nice and even. And then, unfortunately, this way we're just going to have to work with it like what we have. Um, we don't have much of a choice. But then what we're going to do is want it to look as even as possible for as many of the folds as possible. The first one is not going to be perfect. Uh, that's something we all just have to live with. I know it's crying out and you to kind of make it the right way and, you know, but we do what we can here. So now we've taken it to this point and again, just kind of, you know, pull it out, even it as much as you can, tuck it in a little bit if you, if you need to, and we're going to fold it into another third. I find that the number three in terms of folding is the ideal number of um, layers you want. So two folds makes three layers. Okay, and again, we're going to make sure that our corners are straight. The straighter the corner, the better your stack in your closet. And then we're just going to go fold and fold. And there we have a nice, tight, little folded fitted sheet. Now, how are you going to know it's a fitted sheet when you put it in your closet? You're going to know this because you're going to stack all your fitted sheets in a separate location from your flat sheets. Now, why would you do that? Well, living in California, I find the whole flat sheet concept on a bed sort of redundant, sort of why do I need it? I just have a comforter and a sheet, and that's it. Maybe another blanket or two, but this way I can reuse the flat sheets as something else in the future, maybe to cover a sofa. Um, you know, just it's always nice to have fabric that's been, um, you know, where the edges have already been sewn up for you, because I use those to make pillowcases. Um, again, redeployment, saving the fabric, that's the most important part. Some people make it, um, you know, into curtains. Do not do that. That's tacky. Okay, and I just noticed as I was holding this up for the camera that it wasn't quite perfect. And so, again, um, it's going to bug me if I don't just have it just right. So, and don't ever be afraid to refold something. Just because you folded it once doesn't mean you can't do it better the next time. So periodically what I'll do, and we'll get into this eventually, is showing you how to redo a fold. And so see now, you don't have that extraneous fabric hanging out inside. Okay, now we're going to continue to, you'll have to pardon me, I have a little bit of an allergy right now, so. Um, we're going to continue with the folding. And I'm going to, again, keep this yellow sheet out as a sample just so I know what I'm doing. Um, Okay, now these are ones I had done in the laundry a couple of weeks back. Uh, didn't get to them right away like I would have liked, but it doesn't matter. I just stuck them in a little plastic bin, and um, I'll show you the bins in a little bit. But uh, it's best to just organize all your stuff that you haven't done into a nice little area. You're, you're, my cameraman's laughing at me, so it's okay. But... He's also my director of photography, and also my husband. <laughs> He's just making me laugh, too. I am so sorry. We're trying to shoot this as efficiently as we can, and now he's just killing me. He is killing me. But he's, um, I call him tuba tummy, because he's got that big old tuba tummy there. Okay. So, again, we want to have the flat side here, and in this case, um, oh, look, the patterns match. These are the same manufacturer. Oh, perfect. It's best to sort of standardize on who you get your products from because um, it doesn't matter who it is, but as long as you maintain the same person or the same company, it just makes life so much easier in terms of folding, organizing, keeping the stacks of shampoo in the same direction. Um, it just um, It's just a good idea. Um, obviously, it's not something I, you know, I do 
on purpose, but when I can, I try to. And uh, we'll talk about organizing your, uh, your pantry and your different cabinets as we can. So again, you're fluffing it out. You want to keep it as close to as what you have on your original sample as well. And again, you want to match the, um, the corners. Um, and on these, because um, I've already used these a couple times, um, I took out the pesky little tag. I do this on all my clothing without exception. So whereas the, the brand of manufacturer is important, um, to me that's because of the quality, not because of the name on the label. And so I just take all these guys out. Um, on my silk sweaters especially, they itch me like you wouldn't believe right on the back collar here. And so that's not a good thing, uh, at least for me. Again, uh, I tend to uh, be very sensitive as far as what fabrics um, itch me and, and with my allergies and whatnot. Uh, I do try to be careful about that. And uh, so here with this sheet, we're following the same procedure. And the reason I'm doing this more than once is so that you can get a good idea of how to do it. Um, repetition is the key. Um, practice it with the first couple of sheets and then, um, you know, just come back to it. And the queen size is going to be the hardest fold because that's the one where, gee, it looks like it ought to go this way. And of course the orientation is the way that you figured it wasn't. And uh, there's just a whole host of problems in a queen size bed. So again, we want to pull everything out as far as we can on the ends. And following the example here, what we've done here is we've made a nice little semicircle moon. And what this allows you to do is um, you want to pull it up just to kind of make things straight without sacrificing the give. I mean, you don't want to stretch out the elastic too badly. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just tuck it here and make like a little triangle here. And a triangle is perfectly acceptable too. It's also the most stable structure known to man. That's why tricycles, in my opinion, are better than bicycles. But I've been asking for a tricycle for years as a Christmas present. My husband just won't get me one, but we'll talk about that later. So you see now we've done it slightly. It wasn't, and uh, there's just a whole host of problems in a queen size bed. So again, we want to pull everything out as far as we can on the ends. And following the example here, what we've done here is we've made a nice little semicircle moon. And what this allows you to do is um, you want to pull it up just to kind of make things straight without sacrificing the give. I mean, you don't want to stretch out the elastic too badly. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just tuck it here and make like a little triangle here. And a triangle is perfectly acceptable too. It's also the most stable structure known to man. That's why tricycles, in my opinion, are better than bicycles. But I've been asking for a tricycle for years as a Christmas present. My husband just won't get me one, but we'll talk about that later. So you see now we've done it slightly differently than the first fold, but we're still maintaining that degree of structure that we always wanted. And again, doing the trifold. And again, this is the one we had originally, and I sort of unfolded it to the point where I almost forgot how to put it back in. And if you look at this one that we've done before, perfect stacking. And that's what we aim for here. The reason we're doing folding for a first episode and not something more glamorous, which I thought about, because we want to do cleaning from the inside out. We want to get the basics down, and then we'll work on details. And we'll probably come back at some point and do a refreshing fold on the whole linen closet. But I sort of been saving these sheets for a while, and if you saw the rest of my house, you'd be astounded at the mess in here. But I just wanted to give you a natural example. So again, here we are, and we're going to fold this one in, and we'll try to get a nice little triangular corner here, 
and again, uh, fold into thirds as much as you can. Um, try to eyeball it for those of you who aren't maybe um, as good at spatial relationships. Um, go ahead and use a measuring stick if you need to. Um, you'll find uh, that women are just as good at uh, sort of eyeballing distances and areas as men are, if not better at some, uh, in some instances, um, which is why women do so well in interior decorating. Okay, and we've got another one. Now again, what I try to do is you want to maintain the same consistency on the side of your stack. And right, so there's little, then the big part. The big part. And we're going to do the same thing here. Why you ask? Because if I don't, I just go nuts at night time. If I don't do it right the first time, um, I just can't handle it. So, okay. Now this one, again, the same thing. We're going to fold the side without the, the little gathers and take the seams, and that's where you want to bring it together. Okay, fluff it out. Again, fluff it out. Ideally, um, it's a good idea to do this kind of thing before you vacuum the carpets because you get these little hair things, and um, there's no point in vacuuming the carpet twice. So, if you do this first, then you'll get all the little, you know, pill things and little dust bunnies out of the way. And again, this proves that you don't have to iron everything right away. If you're going to iron, what's one more wrinkle among friends, right? So, again, you're gonna, you want to stretch it out just while you're folding so you can see where you're at. Um, obviously, the the ones with patterns, uh, uh, with square patterns, geometrical patterns, it's easier because you can sort of tell that you're doing the fold the right way. Uh, with floral patterns, not as easy. Um, I personally don't like floral patterns. It's busy. It looks very, very busy. Um, and I find that, uh, at least uh, with the man in my life, um, it makes him feel less feminine if we have geometrically patterned bed sheets. And again, um, color blocking is its just so much better than having like frou-frou sheets. And you know something, I gotta admit it, I got some frou-frou colors right here. Uh, uh, that was a mistake purchase, but well, it was done, so too late now. Okay, and again, you wanna stretch it out just to, you know. And what happens is, literally, when you fold properly, the fabric almost irons itself within the fold. And you have nice little corners and whatnot when you unfold it to put it on your bed. Okay, and so again, um, this is a little hair from me that's very bad. What I want to do is put that in the trash can. What I do with all my trash cans, by the way, um, I live with somebody who's unable to change the, uh, the trash. And so what I do here with the trash cans, I put seven or thereabouts little bags all ready to go and it saves so much time. And that way there's no question of, well, where's the bag? It's right there underneath. Um, you know, you just tie it up, stick it outside, and you're done. But that's another segment probably. Okay, again, um, I'm triangulating this little corner here and then folding it over for just a nice polished look. And because I have my stack right here, I can sort of, you know, eyeball the, uh, the length of the, um, the folding, or the width of the folding. And again, we bring it like so. And I know this piece looks a little awkward. You can polish it up depending on your preferences. And there we go. And we have finished our folding. And look at the bed, no worse for the wear. All right, welcome back. Uh, we just want to close with a few words on parking etiquette. Um, I was frequently at one of the local shopping malls uh, over the holidays, and I just thought I could offer a few tips and tricks to my fellow drivers there. Uh, 
A, if you're uh, going to move into an aisle, do not hover in the aisle. Keep moving. Keep moving it on out to the next lane. Do not hang out in your favorite lane to get your favorite spot. Okay, uh, let's not stop fellow shoppers coming back with their shopping bags. Inevitably, they don't know where they parked and you'd have to follow them through cars and uh, basically have the ability to transmute your body through objects um, and that would violate the laws of physics. Okay, um, if you are intending to take a space and uh, perhaps it's a large size space and simultaneously you know you see a space that says compact that would be more fitting for your smaller size vehicle as compared to the vehicle that's behind you. Uh, go ahead and take that smaller space. You can do it. I know you can. Um, and leave that bigger space for folks like me with my big ass car because uh, I need the space. And if I move into that compact spot, y'all are not going to be happy because then you'll be saying, what is this big core in the compact space? Never mind that the people who paint those lines, they're a little messed up as far as what's compact and what's full size nowadays. Uh, that's another discussion entirely. Okay, also, if somebody gives you some sort of hand gesture, you know, um, displaying their distress at your parking abilities, um, what I like to do is gesticulate back. Um, that's really the best way to handle those kind of communication issues. Uh, if you don't do it, you're just going to be all pent up. Um, and you really just want to get it out, communicate with your fellow shopper. Hey, we're all out there spending our money as fast as we can, so let's just make it a little easier on us so we have those few extra minutes of retail shopping time. I'm the anal retentive housewife saying have a good week, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Take care.